Hi, welcome to tutorial number 35 for CSCI 130 Introduction to Programming here at the University of Wisconsin Parkside. Now we're working on now we're gonna be working on the um, posting that we have to do. So for that we are implementing the app that is described in chapter 13. And actually um, they say that we did this app already in chapter 7 without using functions and procedures but they want us, they want us to do this uh, uh, app now using functions and procedures so uh, if you remember that um, app I mean you, the user is going to provide the hourly wages in this case is 10 weekly hours 45 so if um, the person works over 40 they get I think 50 percent more right it's 1.5 whatever it is there over time so so in this case it's 10 times 40 that's 400 and then 5 times 15 because it's 10 times 1.5 which will be 15 and that will give you 75 plus the 400 for 75 we don't need a, a, a functions and procedures but we want to do it so we can practice and see how the code changes by using code procedures so let's look at the answer that they provide in figure 13.20 so what we're doing is we're programming the button so we're going to double click on calculate and then what we're doing is okay so once i calculate i'm asking for the hours and the wage and then uh, I read that from the text boxes and then I'm calling a procedure which I give the hours and, the way, and then they're doing the work, the job I don't do anything else hmm, that sounds nice, isn't it? so let's let's get this part so here I already have my Visual Basic uh, open and uh, I got an uh, interface that looks like the one in the book so I got here three labels this is what I have the labels. I changed the title here. It says Watch Calculator. And then here I had three text boxes and a button. So I'm clicking here and I got this. So what I'm going to do first is get the information from the hour. So the wage and the weekly hours. So I'm going to call this um, then, um, let's call this. Uh, hours, many hours they work, and then as maybe well hours will be integer. So integer, and this comes from the first text box, right? So the numerical value of text box one dot text. So let's see if we did that right. Yes. So those hours. Oh, that's the the hours. It's actually text box two. Oops, uh, sorry. So this is text box two. Okay, and then then uh, wages as um let's call this double because we're gonna have decimal. And this is from the numerical value from text box one dot text. Okay, so in the text box, they once they do this, they just call in a function that says display. So let's do the same. So here is gonna complain. This is a procedure in which we wanna say display. I'm gonna call it underscore answer. Now why I'm putting the underscore? Because when I give a name to a procedure, I cannot have a spaces. So if I really need a space, I put the underscore because if I say display space answer, it's gonna say I don't know what you're talking about. And then here I'm gonna give them, you know what? I'm gonna give you the hours, and I'm gonna give you the wage and you do the rest and that's it so it's, it's complaining you see the underlines because it says 
I don't know what display and the score answer. I'm sorry, I'm not able to do this. And that's why we haven't defined. I should define this first before I actually use it. So if I try to use this, it's, it's going to give me an error. So on the next page, so this is everything for the button. But on here, they're defining a sub routine for display pay hours. So they get in the hours and the rate, so they call it hours and rate. And they're going to check here if there is overtime, if it is. So look, they're calling a function here that they call check overtime. So they give the hours and the hour limit. So that looks very fancy. So let's see, I'm going to write it in a different way. So here it says function overtime. Let's write function overtime first. So check overtime. They return a boolean. That means it's going to be true or false. So if the hours is greater than limit, which will be the 40, then return true, otherwise false. So I'm going to put this sample. I just want to call it overtime. Okay. So just like in the previous tutorial, we go outside of the, the sub, and then I'm going to say function overtime. I will provide something. I'm going to give the number of hours. So I'm going to call that x as integer. I'm not going to put what they have in the book, the 40. And I'm going to return boolean to. Boolean is either true or false. Then we're going to check if x, whatever is the x that they gave me, is greater than 40. Then return true. Else return false. How's that? So I'm giving an x, which is going to be the number of hours. It's just to check. Do I need to pay over time? So this function, the only thing is it checks the 40. Is that greater than 40? Oh, yes, you have to. That's when it returns true. No, you don't. False. Okay, so that's what they have on this function, what they call overtime. So I'm calling mine just overtime. So they call it check overtime. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to do the display. So on the display, they get the hours and they get the rate, but they're computing the earnings here. So, and they're using accounts to have the hour limit. So this is nice because maybe for some companies the hour limit is more than 40 and then they can change here if they change it to, I don't know, 35, 33, maybe they can make the change there, I didn't do that. So here we're going to declare variable earnings. So I'm going to define a function. So I call it my display answer, right? So look, here this is a function and a function has returned statements. Because when I call this, this becomes either true or false. Now I'm going to define a sub. The name display underscore answer. And for that, I will provide two values. I'm going to say x as integer. Well, I'm going to call it different. a as integer and b as integer. Now, subs don't have return statements. So look, you compare the sub with the function. The function has the as boolean here, which says, okay, I'm expecting to return something. Here I don't have that because I don't have a return value and I'm not gonna have any returns here. Look at how the underscore disappear because now it's happy it says, oh, now I know what you're talking about. Display answer is that. Haven't said what to do, so then we're going to define a variable dim earnings as they have a decimal, but I think I'm using double. Okay. Now, um, what they have is they check if there is overtime. So if they say if overtime equals false, then they compute the um, the, the, the salary just by hours times the rate. So let's do the same. 
So here, if I think my function is over time, right? Over time, given x, x is the number of hours. So let's let's check over here. So hours is my first variable, which here I call in that a. So when I give the hours that I got from the second text box, and this is my second text box, okay? So here is called hours. Put it here. When I go here, it's called a. So hours equals a. So here I'm going to call that a. And that's the only thing that I need for overtime. Equals false. Then we don't need to pay any overtime. Then we just compute the earnings equal to the hours times B. I mean, yeah, hours times the salary, right? That's it. Else, we have a different function there because then we got overtime. So in that case, we need to take away the 40 and compute the um, earnings. So, so, so I'm going to do the formula in just one statement. So what we're going to do is, okay, so then the earnings earnings equals for the first 40 hours times the rate, which is B, plus the overtime. And then the overtime is going to be the hours, which is A, minus 40. So those are the, the overtime. And then this will be times 1.5. That's it. This is just once. Okay, now we got the answer in earnings, but we need to display that on this, which is my text box 3. Then we need to say text box 3 dot x equals to earnings. Now remember, we need to format this so we get an answer. So I'm going to press F5. So it's 10, 40 hours, calculate 400. Now let's say 45, and this should be 475, right? So here we got a problem. Oh, here's the problem. We do the, we take away the hours and then we, we, we say in here that we're going to pay a dollar and fifty. So it's, it's what well, we're paying B amount. Oops, need to close this first. So we're playing here B amount. B, then that is times 1.5. Okay, now that should be fine. So let's do this one more time. So here this is 10, and then this is 40, should be 400, right? This is 45, should be 475. Okay, good. So now that doesn't look like money, so we can do what we know, which is the very last thing they have the string dot format, and we can copy that. And have it like that. So string dot format. And then we have this. And then we got zero comma zero column C. I need to hurry up because now the tutorial is too long. So zero column C. Close this. Close. Yes, and the parentheses. There. Now it should be beautiful. So one more time. This is 10. This is 45. There. Beautiful. Okay, so now I'm just going to post this and that's the post. Thank you.